Hi everyone, it's Anne back again. And you're thinking, what the heck's she doing today? Well, it's not a, a cooking show today. This is still crafting, uh, paper crafting. Uh, but I wanted to explore using some products that normally, or containers that normally you would just discard into the bin. And I thought, I'm sure there's things we can make from them. So that's my intention today. I haven't made anything yet. This is all brand new. So bear with me. There may be some hiccups. Now starting with the obvious. Um, <clears throat> just recycling the cardboard. Just cutting out uh, the, the pieces from a large cardboard box gives you ample card to work with. And usually on the inside... Um, they're white or this one I think is what they call box board it's kind of that crafty colour on the inside like that and sometimes when you get these big boxes I went all through my pantry but I didn't have one um, they sometimes have a, uh, a window in them this bird seed that I buy sometimes if I get a different one it has an acetate window so I could see the seed through the, the box um, that would be perfect because you could cut out the card around the acetate, leaving the acetate, and make a nice embellishment actually utilising the window. But I haven't got that with that one, so that's just an idea. So use your big boxes just to um, harvest the cardboard from them. <coughs> Alright, now this one is a nice little box. <clears throat> and it comes apart it's not glued together at the top and bottom only at the side now, <clears throat> what I want to use is just a part of it so I'm going to look where the seam is where they've stuck the sides together which is here and see if I can just carefully run my finger under it and just pull it apart without doing too much damage. So what I ended up with is this. I'll get my cutting mat. And I'm going to need a metal ruler and a knife. I only, what, what my idea is, I just kind of put it back together a bit. What I want to use is just this top piece, but I want a little edge around it to make it into a tray. So I want to keep all this, so I'll keep that, and I keep that, and that. And I'm just going to open it up and run my knife down. Now this is how deep I want my tray. If you can see that line there where the box folds, <clears throat> I'm just coming in about a couple of mils. And that's how the depth I want my tray when it's finished. You'll see what I mean in a sec. I'm just going to run the knife all the way down there that's my discard piece this is the piece I want now it looks like a very funny shape like that but when I put it back together and I'm going to use some glue You'll, you'll see exactly what I mean. <clears throat> uh, oops. I don't know which piece to start with. I think I'll just reinforce the folds like that. Now 
and start putting it back together. My glue doesn't want to cooperate, I just need to use a pin, excuse me. Okay, it didn't want to cooperate, so I'm going to use some different glue. <coughs> okay, and I'm going to glue the box back together. So, putting a little bit of glue on there. Glue that piece down. A little bit of glue on that one. Glue that one down. Some glue along there. Okay, doesn't want to stay down. I'll just pinch it for a second just till it grabs. All right, so what I've got is this little tray. I've still got uh, <coughs> the lid the piece that tucked in sticking up so I'm going to trim that off. I can use the uh, the piece that I cut as a guide to where to cut it off. got is a little tray like that. I can use that to make a, a specimen tray. Actually I could have actually done the, the put the flaps on the other side so that this base was flat. Now I come to think of it. So let's use the other half of the box <coughs> and do it the other way. So I'm going to cut a line along here. I did warn you there'd be some hiccups. So the flaps are shorter on this end of the box. <coughs> I'm going to put the glue on this side and tuck it under like that. And then some glue along that little piece. Oops. Okay. And then some on this little flap. I've really just reassembled the box. And I just tuck that little piece in. Okay, and I've got this bigger flap again. From where it tucked in, so we'll trim it. Oh, 
Okay, that's better. Now I don't have the flaps on the inside, they're on the back, on the outside. That gives me a smooth base to work on. Alright, let's try another one. Now, what I was thinking was, of using the end pieces. I don't want any of this, but I thought that little piece there might be useful. So again, I'm going to see if it will come apart. Not too much damage. another seam somewhere where it's glued together here. I don't need to worry about destroying this part of the box because I'm not going to use that. I'm only going to use the end piece. Okay, so I'll flatten it out and I want my tray to be about that deep. So I'll discard that piece and this piece I want to reassemble. flap on the back. So that's what I want to end up with, like that. So let's glue that. And this little bit, tuck it on the inside. And I'll just hold it for a second. Alright, oh well we got this adorable little tray to use a specimen tray to decorate. I like that one. That was just the end of the box. All right, what else have we got? Oh, one of these. I'm sure you know what this is. This one's a bit more uh, difficult because it doesn't come apart and it's not flat. I only want to use the end part to make a little round specimen tray. So I want to cut that off and I want to cut it off neatly. So my idea is to put the lid on the other end and use that as a guide. And I'll just make a mark around where I want to cut, for the, the cutting line to be. Okay. 
Now, I don't think my um, knife here is going to do the trick, so I've actually got a serrated knife here. I'm going to try that. More like a saw. Once it get through it, it's a case of following the black line. Alright, there we are. And I just run over that with a sanding block. Sorry, now I've got chip crumbs all over my table. I should have wiped it first. All right, and that's a nice little tray. So we've got three so far. All right, now I'm going to just paint them with some gesso. And then I'll have to leave them to dry. All right, now I've made a big mess of my hands and the desk. I'm going to have to let those dry and then I'll be back and we'll decorate them and see how they look then. Okay, back shortly. All right, well I'm back again and um, the gesso's dried. Uh, I could have given them more coats to make them a bit better but as they're going to be covered up anyway, I thought they were probably good enough. So now I've got these three little cute specimen trays, so we'll decorate them. Uh, we'll do this one first. I've got a few things here that I pulled out. They may or may not work. So this is a specimen label. It was from a stamp. I stamped it on a piece of uh, tea dyed paper. I'm just going to stick that in the bottom. Like that. And then I've got this nice, I don't know what to call it, gauzy stuff. Just adds a bit of texture to the background. Might be a bit much. Just put that in the bottom there, put a little bit of glue in. Okay, and I've got a butterfly here, I thought it was quite nice. But I'm going to uh, just give it a little bit of dimension. You know I like dimension. So I'm just going to bring in this um, mat. And I've got these uh, embossing tools. I'm just going to go over the, the back of the butterfly. <clears throat> That's better. I might need to put that on a, a sticky foam square. It's a bit fat. Put 
put a bit of extra glue on because I don't trust these foam squares. They seem to dry out the glue on the back very quickly. Okay, so I've got the butterfly there and I've got this little specimen number which I'll use this other little piece of foam square that I cut on there. Okay, double glue. Let's put that in the bottom. Okay. Let's go around the edge with the archival ink. There's our first one done. Now, the next one was this cute little one. I like this one. I think this is my favourite because it's, it's a nice size. And I got out a few things that I thought I could use for this one. In the bottom I'd like a piece of holdy worldy paper. I'll just tear that. It needs to be about there. edges and a little bit of archival ink before I stick it down. I might do the edges of the box too while I'm at it. The gesso has made what was a very flimsy box nice and stiff so it's easy to work with now. Okay, <clears throat> so a dab of glue. And we'll put that in the bottom. Like that. And now I've got a stamp, an old stamp. <clears throat> I'm going to stick that on too. a tiny piece of lace. put her on a sticky mount and then she'll stand up a bit more. Starting to like that. You can 
see that. And I think one of these uh, buttons might just finish it off. I want one that's got two holes in so that I can put a little bit of thread through it. Maybe that one's too big. It's actually two stuck together. Oh, that one will do. I've got a piece of uh, string. Put my glasses on. <laughs> I get in trouble if I try and do things without my glasses on the video. You might have noticed. I give as good as I get. Rini says all these things about me in jest. But at the end of the day, I was the one who taught her how to use a spoon. Just that little bit of string through the holes just kind of adds another dimension. Blob of glue. I think that's enough. So now we have two. And the biggest one and the last one. I printed out a couple of Rini's digis. These mushroom ones. I'm going to use this one, but I needed two. I'll show you why I needed two in a moment. There's my ruler. Yeah. Okay, was that a good guess? Oh, look at that. Ta-da! <laughs> Alright, so that's going to be in the bottom. Oh, I should go around the edge with some always forget, sorry, a bit of ink, just do it without getting the glue all over the place. Alright, I think we saved the day. I'll tell you the number of times I forget to do the edges. All right. I might just go over the edge of this one while I think of it. Take the second one and just cut that out roughly. I don't need all of it, so I'm not bothered whether it's the right size. And I'm going to cut out the top of the mushroom.
Now bring my mat back in. I'm going to do the same on the back of the mushrooms as I did on the butterfly. There's a tool. And I'll bring this back in. I'm going to put that over here. And it just gives it some dimension. bit of glue. Now if you're worried about it getting squashed flat, if you've got it in a journal, you can always put a little bit of cotton wool under it. before you stick it down. Dan, Cotton Wool wants to poke out. So that's that one. I don't know if you'll be able to pick that up, but it's just giving it a little bit of extra dimension. And where I've got these two butterflies, I'm going to use some other butterflies so that they too will stand out. Let's see what we've got here. one will probably work. Maybe a bigger one as well, that one. Alright, I'm not going to um, go over them with the embossing tool but I am just going to bend them a little bit to give a bit of curve to the wings. Pop a little bit of glue down. Well, there's our three pieces decorated and nobody would know if you didn't tell them that they came from rubbish. This, is the, this was the end of the box like that and now it's a, a little um, piece of ephemera. And I just, I love those and I, I, I like them even better that I was able to recycle some of my, what would be rubbish, had to make them. Alright, if you're still with me, <laughs> I thank you for getting this far and thank you for watching. And I will be back again soon, I hope, with another video. Until then, have fun. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.